Hey guys, I'm Oliver with Motionary, and today you're going to learn the top Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts to help you edit faster and more efficiently. Let's start with something you do at least once at the beginning of every project, and maybe a number of additional times throughout, and that's importing. You may import all your footage right at the beginning of your project, but you may also have to import more footage later in your project. Pressing Command I is a fast way to bring up the import window rather than having to choose three different clicks in your menu structure just to get to the same place. So that then brings us on to number two, compound clips. Compound clips can be extremely useful, not just for creating unique effects, but also for creating a cleaner looking timeline by bundling clips together. Where you could select all your clips to include in the compound clip, then right click, and select option New Compound Clip, you could simply hit Command G to bring up the naming window. Rename your clip and hit Enter without your hands ever having to leave the keyboard. Oftentimes, you'll want to turn a clip, title, or effect on or off without actually having to delete or remove it from your timeline. So how do you do that easily? When a clip is highlighted, you can hit the V key to enable or disable without having to adjust your timeline. As an example, you may want to see what your original clip looks like without the title over the top. Simply select the title and hit V to disable the title layer. And when you want to turn it back on, just select and hit V again. It's an easy way to proof or check your timeline. Speaking of checking your edit, it's common you want to skip to the start or end of a clip many times throughout your edit. Rather than moving your playhead with the mouse, try using the semicolon or apostrophe shortcut. Hitting semicolon will move your playhead to the beginning of your current clip. And if you want to go to the end of your current clip, try using the apostrophe. Notice how the playhead snaps to the beginning or end of each clip. Final Cut Pro has a magnetic timeline, which means clips, layers, and your playhead snap to key points on your timeline, like clip in and out points and markers. Rightly so, this feature is called snapping. This is an awesome feature, but there are times you need greater precision to access specific frames close to a key point, and the magnetic timeline makes this difficult. This may more commonly become an issue when you're trying to access frames close to the end of a clip. No problem though, because you can easily turn the snapping on or off by hitting N on your keyboard. You can see if your snapping is turned on or off by checking the icons just above the timeline. But just so there's no confusion, the snapping is triggered by N, while your next shortcut is triggered by M, and those are marker points. Marker points allow you to mark specific points on your timeline for multiple reasons. You can create a general marker point, a to-do marker, or even a chapter marker. Wherever your playhead is on the timeline, you can hit M to add a general marker, and then hit M again on that marker to edit a title or change the type. This is a really useful tool you can use for organization, or even for marking where specific events should happen in your edit. This is also a great tool to use when working with another editor, so you can leave comments at specific points for them to pick up on too. So shortcut number seven gives you access to three different tools for editing on your timeline, and those are A, B, and P. The first of our favorite selection tools is the default selection tool, which you can access by hitting A, and you'll most likely need this once you've used one of the other selection tools, like the Blade tool. The Blade tool is a super efficient way to cut clips with a single click, and you can access this tool by hitting B. Once you're done making your cuts, you can hit A to get back to your selection tool. Or, rather than going back to the selection tool, you could use the position tool, which allows you to move clips around the timeline without nudging any of the clips up or down. This tool simply overwrites whatever you paste over the top of, while also creating a blank slug where you move the clip from. This is a great tool for maintaining prior and future clip positionings, and you can access the tool by hitting P. Talking of going between tools, what's about a shortcut for copying effects between clips? It's common to copy effects from one clip to another, like a color grade for example, and Final Cut Pro makes this super easy to do. To do it, Select the clip you wish to copy the effects from, 
and hit Command C. Then go to the clip you want to paste the effects to and hit Command Shift V. A menu will pop up to have you select which attributes you want to paste to the new clip. Once you've selected the ones you want to paste, hit Paste. Now your clip will have the same attributes as the clip you copied the attributes from. The only frustrating thing about pasting new attributes is that Final Cut Pro will then have to render out that clip again before you can review it in HD. So how about just rendering out a selection? Our second to last shortcut will give you the ability to render out a specific selection so you can quickly view back in HD without having to wait on your full timeline to render. This differs from background render which renders out your whole timeline. By selecting the specific clips you want to render, you can hit Ctrl R to render out just those clips. This feature is extremely useful when you want to see how a specific looks immediately after a change. But when I say immediately, you'll have to give Final Cut Pro a little bit of time to process the render, and wouldn't it be nice to know just how much time you'll have to wait? By hitting Command 9, you can bring up the background task window so you can see the progress of any task Final Cut Pro is currently working on. In this window, you can track useful items like importing, rendering, and sharing progression. Now that you know our top Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts, we also want to mention a bonus shortcut that you can use to customize your own keyboard shortcuts. By hitting Option Command K, you can bring up the keyboard shortcuts window. Before you begin making any changes, we suggest making a duplicate of the default keyboard shortcuts by going to the menu in the top left and hitting Duplicate. Once you're sure you're working on a duplicated keyboard, you can start making adjustments. Hold down any keyboard key or click on the Command Editor key to see the shortcuts associated with that key. To remove a shortcut, drag the associated function from the key detail box in the bottom right to anywhere on the screen and poof, it's gone. Be careful though, because once it's gone, it's gone. And unfortunately, you can't use the undo function. And now to create a new shortcut, drag the function you want from the command list over to the key detail field. Now, you can experiment and make all the changes you want before saving your new keyboard setup. Just be sure to make sure you write down all the changes you've made. Now to choose between keyboards you've created, go to Final Cut Pro, Command, and select your desired keyboard. So guys, that's it from me. And I hope you found this video on the top Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts helpful. And feel free to check out all our awesome transitions, effects, stock footage, and more we have to offer at Motion Array. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.